Good morning, everybody. Uh, today we're going to start our unit number one of the language class. Uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you for being here. Okay. Before we start, it's important, please, that you remember the following. Please, first thing, be seated in a quiet place. Try to find a place where you can concentrate, no distraction, no people around. Uh, another important thing, you can take notes, you can use a notebook, you can use folder, or if you want, you just can keep this information on a digital folder, or you can print it at any time you want, okay? So if you have that ready, we can go on. What are we going to do today? We're going to divide this class in three parts. The first part, we're going to check the vocabulary of unit number one. Second part, we are going to review again tenses. The two last classes, we reviewed the principal tenses that we need to remember in English. So we are going to remember them again to make sure you don't have problems with that. And finally, we will have a pronunciation mini lesson. Sometimes there are words that are difficult to pronounce. And so it's important to check some little points of pronunciation class by class, all right? So are you ready to start? Everything on your desk? So let's go on. Vocabulary. The vocabulary from this unit refers to idioms. So maybe you are asking yourself, okay, idioms, English, Spanish, French. Well, those are not idioms, right? Those are languages. Idioms has another meaning. So remember that. English, Spanish, French, Italian, etc. Those are languages. What is an idiom? An idiom is an expression whose meaning cannot be deduced literally. That means that when I have an idiom, an idiom is an expression, it's not a word, it's a group of words. I cannot translate it word by word because if I translate it word by word, I won't understand the meaning, okay? So they are not literal. Why do we use idioms? Because they help us express our feelings in a more illustrative and colorful way. Sometimes it makes the, the speech be more humorous, uh, more fun. So that's the reason we use idioms. I'm going to show you a very typical example of a phrase of an idiom that uh, tells us why we cannot translate it word by word, okay? It's raining cats and dogs. What's the meaning of that idiom? It means raining heavily. So if we think about each of the words, we will have this in our minds, right? It's raining cats and dogs. So cats and dogs falling from the sky. But that would be the literal meaning. The real meaning is this one. It's raining very hard, right? So it's an idiom. You cannot translate it word by word. So what we're going to check today is some idioms related to parts of the body. I mean, they include parts of the body, but as we don't translate them literally, in fact, they don't refer about parts of the body. It's, uh, the, the meaning is completely different to that, okay? So we have the first one. To be under someone's thumb. Well, the thumb is this finger, right? The fat finger from the hand. So what is to be under someone's thumb? Maybe we think in this moment about this, but that's not the real meaning, right? It's impossible to do that. So what is the meaning of to be under someone's thumb? Is to be controlled or dominated by someone. For example, he's been under his mother's thumb for years means that his mother is controlling him as telling him what to do, checking what he does all the time. That's the meaning of he's been under his mother's thumb. He kept his employees under his thumb. It means that this manager is always controlling, supervising, monitoring what his employees do. So that's the meaning of being under someone's thumb. That's the first idiom. Second one, to get something off your chest. So it's not that I'm going to put my hands in my chest and take something out, right? To get something off your chest is this. When you have um, something that bothers you, that worries you, that concerns you, and you go to a friend, a priest, a psychologist, 
and you tell them what you feel in order to feel better. That's to get something off your chest. To tell someone about something that has been worrying you for a long time. Example, I'm glad the meeting helped me get that problem off my chest. Okay, the third one. To do something behind someone's back. Okay, I think it's pretty clear in this picture. What's the meaning of that, right? So is to intentionally say or do something about someone who is not present or cannot know. Example, Tom will be upset, angry, that we already made the decision behind his back. It means that they decided without telling him, okay? So that is the meaning of to do something behind someone's back. The next one, to give someone the cold shoulder. What is that? In this picture, we have the meaning very clear. We have a couple, probably they had a discussion, and if you see the girl's attitude, if you see, she's ignoring him. She doesn't want to talk to him. So she's giving him the cold shoulder. So it's to treat someone in a cold manner or to ignore someone. Example, he gave me the cold shoulder at the party. He didn't talk to me at all. Next one. To lend someone a hand. Here we have the man is helping the, the old woman with the groceries. The other guy is helping the kid that maybe fell down. So to lend someone a hand is to help someone do something, especially something that needs physical effort. For example, lend me a hand with, he, with this box. It means that you're asking for help to carry the box. Okay, that's to lend a hand. Next one to pull someone's leg, okay? Here you have, if you have watched The Simpsons, you know that Bart makes jokes on the phone, right, to the bartender. That's to pull someone's leg. So it's to make someone believe something that is not true as a joke. For example, I panic when he said the test was tomorrow, but then I realized he was just pulling my leg. Or let's suppose, Tonight, your mother tells you, look, tomorrow you don't have classes. The teacher says that today is going to be a free day, so you can sleep all morning. And you get happy, yes, okay, and you're happy because of that. And then your mother tells you, no, sorry, that was a joke. Ah, okay, that is to pull someone's leg, okay, to tell someone something that is not true as a joke, okay? The next one, to see eye to eye with someone. Well, here you have in the picture two people, and if you see, you have <clears throat> the same things going out of their heads. So what is to see eye to eye with someone? It's not that I'm going to glue my eye with the eye of the other person, right? It's to agree or have the same opinion. For example, this is the only problem which I don't see eye to eye with him. This is the only problem where we don't agree. That's the meaning in this case. The next one. To stick your neck out for someone. If you see here, this man is walking towards risk. So what is to stick your neck out for someone? Is to expose yourself to risk or danger or responsibility to defend or help someone. Especially that happens with friends. If a friend has a problem, <clears throat> I sometimes, with a teacher, I go and talk to the teacher to defend him. Or maybe I... <clears throat> I believe in my friend and the teacher doesn't, and so I stick my neck out for my friend. I take a risk, a danger to help my friend. Example, I'm sticking my neck out for you here, so I hope you behave, okay? So we have seen eight different idioms. Again, to make sure it was clear, we have, to be under someone's thumb, to get something of your chest, to do something behind someone's back, to give someone the cold shoulder, to lend someone a hand, To pull someone's leg, to see eye to eye with someone, 
to stick your neck out for someone. Okay, those are the eight idioms. Okay, so here we have the definitions. Treat someone in an unfriendly way. Tell someone something that is not true as a joke. Help someone. Do something without someone knowing about it. Take a risk because you believe in someone. Be controlled by someone. Tell someone about something that has been worrying you and have the same opinion as someone. <clears throat> and here on the right, I have the eight idioms. Be under someone's thumb, do something behind someone's back, get something off your chest, give someone the cold shoulder, lend someone a hand, pull someone's leg, see eye to eye with someone and stick your neck out for someone. Okay, in this moment, please pause the video and on a piece of paper on, on your mind, please do the following exercise. We're going to match, okay? So pause the video and try to do it. And after you are done with that, you can play it again and check the answers, okay? So to treat someone in an unfriendly way, is to give someone the cold shoulder. To tell someone something that is not true as a joke is to pull someone's leg. To help someone is to lend someone a hand. To do something without someone knowing about it is to do something behind someone's back to take a risk because you believe in someone is to stick your neck out for someone. To be controlled by someone is to be under someone's thumb. To tell someone about something that has been worrying you is to get something off your chest. And to have the same opinion as someone is to see eye to eye with someone, okay? So those are the correct answers. Is that clear? Excellent, nice job. If that is not clear, please pause the video, go back and check that you understand the meanings of each of the eight idioms, okay? So with that, we have finished the first part, which is the vocabulary. Today, idioms related to parts of the body. Now, we are going to do a revision of tenses. We have already checked this the last week, the last two weeks, but now we're going to review again to make sure that this is clear. Here you have the tenses that we have seen, present simple, present progressive, past simple, past progressive, present perfect, past perfect, will, and be going to. We are going to review here the uses, okay? If you need, you can pause the video, check the PowerPoint, the slides and the information from the previous class, okay? Here we have the uses, obviously in a different order. We have future plans, an action in the past that happened before another, an action in progress for a period of time in the past, habits or routines, an action that started in the past and has consequences now, Actions happening at the moment of speaking, actions that started and finished in the past, and promises, predictions, and offers. So the same thing, please pause the video and make sure you have a piece of paper or in your mind, please try to match the tenses with the uses. If you are ready, let's go on. Present simple is for habits or routines, things we do every day. Present progressive or continuous is for actions happening at the moment of speaking. For example, in this moment, I'm talking to you. Past simple, actions that started and finished in the past. For example, yesterday I ate a delicious chocolate cake. Next one, past progressive for an action in progress for a period of time in the past. For example, if I say, I was watching a movie when my mother called me. So it generally 
is for a period of time in the past, and I usually mix it with simple past with when and while. Present perfect, an action that started in the past and has consequences or continues now. For example, I have read a lot of books this quarantine. So it means that I started like two months ago and today I continue reading books, okay? That's the use of the present perfect, past perfect an action in the past that happened before another. For example, if I say, I had prepared this PowerPoint before I recorded the class. What have, both actions are in the past, but what happened first? I prepared the PowerPoint or I recorded the class. First, I prepared the PowerPoint, right? So I use past perfect in that part. I had prepared the PowerPoint before I recorded the class. Be going to is for future plans. For example, I'm going to repair my car next week. And will is for promises. I will be there for you. Predictions. It will be windy tomorrow or offer. I will take you in my car. Okay? So those are the tenses with their uses a revision of last week's class, okay? Let's check again the tenses, but now we are going to check using sentences. Let's take a look at this sentence. She has played the piano for five years. What tense is it? Do you have the answer on your mind? Are you sure? Let's check. Right, present perfect. She has played the piano for five years. I started five years ago and in this moment it continues. I started classes on Monday. What tense is this? Right, it is simple past. An action that started and finished in the past, in this case, on Monday. I was watching TV while my mother was sleeping. What tense is this? I was watching TV. I was watching TV while my brother was sleeping. This is past progressive, right? I usually use while or when and is in progress for a time in the past. I think it won't rain today. I think it won't rain today. What is this? What tense? Future with will, and it's a prediction. For predictions, I use will. I have classes from Monday to Friday. From Monday to Friday. What tense is this? Right. Simple present, the most common tense. An action that I usually do. In this case, from Monday to Friday is a habit. Next one. My sister is going to take an English course next month. My sister is going to take an English course next month. What tense is this? Right, future be going to for plans. What phrase helps me to know that this is going to and is future because I have next month. And finally we have, I had already finished my homework when my mother arrived. I had already finished my homework. What tense is this? Right, past perfect. I have two actions in the past. What happened first? I finished my homework or my mother arrived? Right, first I finished my homework. So to specify that that was first than the other, I use past perfect. I had already finished my homework when my mother arrived. Are tenses clear? If not, please go back. So we have finished the revision of tenses again, in case you still had doubts. We have seen vocabulary, eight idioms related to parts of the body. Remember that idioms cannot be translated literally. Now we have reviewed the tenses, and now we are going to end with a pronunciation mini lesson. As I told you, there are many, many words that we tend to pronounce incorrectly in English. So little by little, we are going to check them, okay? So today, 
I want you to pay attention to these words. I'm going to put here six words. If you don't know the meaning, here you have the image that can help you understand the word. I'm not going to pronounce them yet. So this is a little fruit that we find sometimes in chocolate bars, sometimes inside cakes. And even we can eat it as a healthy snack in the middle of the afternoon. This one is a type of fish. It is more expensive than the others. And one characteristic is that the meat is like a light pink. This one means 50% and 50%, right? Like you have there in the pictures. This one is an exercise we should do every day or frequently for our health. This one is a synonym for speak. And this one, which is a modal verb, right? That you know very well. So look at the six words, tell me. What do they have in common in the way they are written? Look at them. If you notice, there's one consonant that you have in all of them, right? Yes, I'm sure you have identified it. So, why these words are sometimes difficult to pronounce? Because they have a silent L. It means they are silent L words. So, we don't pronounce the L. I think that the words we have on the column on the right, we generally pronounce them correctly. But on the words that we have on the left, we sometimes tend to forget that they have a silent L. So today in this pronunciation lesson, we have silent L words. There are more, but we're going to check six of them, right? Okay, so the pronunciation of these words is like this, almond. Almond. The second one is salmon. Salmon. You don't pronounce the L, right? The next one, half. Half. The next, walk. Walk. The next one, talk. Talk. And the last one, wood. Wood. Okay? Repeat them, please, at home. And I'm going to pronounce them one more time. Almond, salmon, half, walk, talk, wood. Okay? So remember, these are silent L words. You don't pronounce the letter L. Like this, we have other cases, a lot of cases in English where consonants are silent. So keep in mind and remember these six words, and maybe you can look out for more that have the same things and a silent L in the middle of them. Ammon, salmon, have, walk, talk, and wood. All right, guys, so we have finished the content of this lesson, vocabulary related to idioms with parts of the body, revision of tenses, and a mini lesson of silent L words, okay? Now, just uh, your homework. Remember that I told you that we are going to um, practice speaking. So, speaking activity steps. The first thing you are going to do, follow these steps. Read the text about the benefits of social interaction and the benefits of being alone. This is a reading. You have the importance of social interactions and the surprising benefits of being alone. We are not going to read it in this moment, but you can find it here in the video, and you can also see it in the slides that I'm going to put on the Google site, remember? If you have forgotten the link to the Google site, I'm going to send it again, but there you will find the recording of this class and also the, the, the slides, okay? So first thing, read the text. After you read the text, you are going to prepare a prepare and practice a speech two minutes long. Okay, but what is the speech about? Okay, you can use the following questions to help you write a speech, sorry, to, to help you do the speech. But remember that it's not question and answer that you're going to do. These questions can help you, but it's a speech, not an interview, okay? Possible questions or things to help you. First, start by saying your name, 
summarize the reading in your own words, express your opinion about the content of the reading. Do you agree or not? What is better for you, social interaction or isolation and why? When do you prefer social interaction? When do you prefer isolation? Mention your experience in this time of social distance, quarantine and isolation. How have you felt? What have you done? Has it been difficult? How do you feel about not seeing your friends or going to school yet? How do you feel about having virtual classes? And always conclude, what would you prefer in this moment? Social interaction or, is, or isolation and why, okay? So you are going to read, after you read, you are going to prepare this talk. For example, let's suppose I'm giving the talk. I'm just to give you a little part, okay? And you start like this. Good morning, my name is Maria Cecilia Espinosa. Um, the reading uh, was about two different things, the benefits of socializing, for example, you can meet with other people, you can have fun, uh, and it's good for your health. But also it mentions that being alone also has benefits. For example, you can concentrate on yourself and you can avoid people that you don't like. Um, for me, I think we should balance between social interaction or isolation because humans are social beings so we need to have contact with others etc etc okay like that is going to be your talk okay so these questions are just a guide that can help you develop your talk two minutes long then when you're ready record your two minute talk using your cell phone remember that you cannot read it's easy to notice when you are reading. If I notice when I watch your video that you are reading, you won't have the complete points because this is not a reading activity. It's a speaking activity, okay? Only two minutes. If you want to talk more, no problem, but not less, please. Then send your two minute speech recording on video, not audio, video. I need to see you. Send your recording via WhatsApp to your teacher. You will probably need to send it in two or three parts, maybe. I mean, if the video is two minutes long, maybe you find it difficult to send it in at once, everything. So no problem, you can send it in parts, two or three parts, no problem, okay? Remember to start with your name. You have to do this until Wednesday, the 10th, okay? Midnight, so you have a lot of time. I'm going to put the homework also in Edukai, but you don't have to send it on Edukai. You have to send it to my WhatsApp until Wednesday the 10th midnight, okay? Is that clear? Please, if it's not clear and you have any doubt, contact me, write to me via WhatsApp and I can help you with anything that you need, okay? Well, thank you very much for uh, being here. Thank you for uh, your time for uh, in this difficult situation for everybody remember everything your teachers give you keep a digital folder of all your subjects and besides that if you want try to print the material that's the best way to remember and study okay thank you very much for your time have fun if you have any questions please contact me okay bye bye good afternoon to everybody